Manchester United smash transfer record. Sane agrees a buy and deal. There's midfielder mayhem. Zaha wants an Everton switch. And we've got a roundup of the day's transfer rumours. That and more coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers. And coming from Amsterdam, this is the Daily News. So first up, and Manchester United have completed the signing finally of Harry Maguire for £80 million. This makes him the second most expensive British transfer of all time behind Gareth Bale and the most expensive defender in the world. That's five million more than Virgil van Dijk. And Manchester United fans will definitely be expecting Virgil van Dijk kind of talent for that money, but I'm not so sure they're going to get it. Don't get me wrong, he's a good player. And obviously when Manchester United come in for someone, clubs up their price. And the fact he's English means that he's going to be worth a little bit more money because there are less players around to fill the English slots needed in each team. But I'm just not so sure he's going to turn out to be the best. The reason I say this is because I think they've been forced into actually buying him. So last summer, there were rumours that the switch was going to happen for around £70 million. Manchester United pulled out because they thought he wasn't quite worth that. So why one season later is he suddenly worth 80 Yeah, he had a good campaign with Leicester. We all know what a brilliant defender he was. But in terms of what he was last summer to what he was worth this summer, he hasn't suddenly jumped up to £80 million. So this leads me to two conclusions. First off, they were really, really desperate. Or secondly, they just couldn't find anybody else at the end of the day he will still be better than what united have gotten at the moment and i can expect to see him partner victor Lindelof in the center of defense along with aaron wambasaka they've actually got a pretty set with back four for the season so wambasaka on the right maguire Lindelof, and luke short left back with david de gea in goal things are looking okay for manchester united but it's when they get into the midfield that they could be looking a little bit lackluster but more onto that a little bit later. But next up, we'll move to Manchester City, where Leroy Sané has agreed to leave the club, according to reports on Monday night. Apparently, this deal to Bayern Munich has not been affected by the fact that he came off injured in the first 10 minutes of their Community Shield penalty victory over Liverpool. The deal could take him to the Allianz Arena for around £18 million per year, which would make him their highest paid player above Robert Lewandowski. The five-year deal could also see Bayern Munich pay of £100 million to Manchester City, making it a Bundesliga transfer record. He has had a great few years at the Manchester City Stadium, but it's been said that he's not so happy with Pep Guardiola, so he wants to move back to Germany where he played before and inherit Iron Robin's number 10 jersey at Bayern Munich. Of course, playing for the biggest club in Germany will do his chances of getting into the Germany squad and being a starter no harm at all. As for a replacement, well, Manchester City obviously only have a few days to sign any replacement, but it looks like they're not really going to be doing it. Guardiola has said he's more than happy with the players in his squad, and if Riyad Mahrez can step up, well, they've got him Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling and even potentially Phil Foden who can play out wide so I'm sure they're more than covered. And sticking with the attacking midfield options next up there's talk that Christian Eriksen could still be leaving Tottenham. At the start of the summer he said he wanted to find a new challenge and I think most players at Spurs and fans accepted that he would be moving on after many years at the club. So why is it with just a few days to go before the start of the Premier League season he's still at Spurs? Well, apparently Real Madrid have kept in contact with his representatives if a move for Paul Pogba or Danny van der Beek should fall through. So it looks like a move still could be on the cards. If that doesn't happen, Manchester United are also said to be still interested because Tottenham target Bruno Fernandes has said that he wants to join them and not move to Old Trafford. Surely, with all this midfielder mayhem, the moves could just be done. Spurs are also said to have agreed to deal for Giovanni Lo Celso, but if they just go in for Bruno Fernandes, they could bring him in, bring Lo Celso in as well, get rid of Eriksen to Manchester United, who can then get rid of Paul Pogba to Real Madrid, and everyone can be happy and sorted. Of course, as I mentioned before, this really affects the Premier League teams, because the transfer window shuts in a few days, whereas for the European stars like Real Madrid and whoever else wants to buy them, they've got until the end of the month. This is also bad news for Spurs, because Christian Eriksen's contract has one year left to go, meaning if they don't get around 50 to 60 million for him this summer, they will end up losing him on a free next year. So next up, and to one of the most ridiculous stories of the day, and it's only because I think the valuation is way out there. It's Everton's bid for Wilfred Zaha. Apparently, the South London club want 120 million for Zaha now. I don't know where they pulled that money from because they were only asking for 70 from Arsenal a few weeks ago. So Everton have responded by putting together a package which they say is worth 100 million pounds. The deal to bring Zaha to Goodison Park, who apparently actually wants to be an Everton player, is worth £65 million to Crystal Palace, plus James McCarthy, plus Cenk Tosun. Surely they're not going to find a better deal in the market than that. The thing is for me, with Wilfred Zaha, he said he wanted to leave because he sees himself at a Champions League club. And after that ill-fated spell at Manchester United, he really wants to prove that he could be amongst the best in England. So, and no disrespect to Everton, they're not even in European competition. Why is he going to move to Goodison Park? If he's that desperate to leave Crystal Palace, I'm sure he could have gone somewhere else. Again, no disrespect to Everton, but he wants to be playing at the highest level, so why is he going there? 
He's also on 130k a week and Everton has said they'll be giving him a massive pay rise. This would put him on the kind of wages that Champions League footballers are on. Again, doesn't quite make any sense to me. Of course, Everton have had a big summer and they'll be pushing for the top four, but I'm not so sure why Zaha would pick them over any other teams. But one other line from Selling Club Crystal Palace and they've brought in former Chelsea defender Gary Cahill after his contract expired at Stamford Bridge. So last but not least, we come to a quick roundup of all the rest of the day's transfer rumours and news. This is where Liverpool have signed West Ham's former goalkeeper Adrian on a free transfer to replace Simon Mignolet who has joined Club Rouge in Belgium. Inter Milan midfielder Rajan Golan has gone back to Cagliari on a season-long loan, the club where he spent four years in the earlier part of the decade. Derby County are willing to offer Wayne Rooney a player slash coach role as he prepares to move into management. And lastly but not least, Pep Guardiola is close to sealing a deal for Juventus defender Jao Cancelo with Danilo and a little bit of cash heading to Juventus. So will Harry Maguire have a massive impact at Old Trafford and will Wilfred Zaha really be moving to Everton? Let me know of your thoughts down in the comment section below. Smash the like button, you can click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I will see you guys later.